This is a chapter of my Python for Beginners course. If you do not have Python or a code editor installed, click on this video first. In this chapter, we're going to calculate with Python. Python can calculate with numbers. A number is a data type. What is a data type? Computer languages like Python need to know how to interpret information. For example, 15 is a number and the word Amsterdam is text. We all know what happens when we multiply two numbers. But what would happen if we multiply two words? Different data types have different purposes and in this training we will look at five of them. 1. Strings Strings are text and can be words or sentences. Examples are names, instructions and addresses. 2. Numbers Numbers can be integers and decimals. Integers are whole numbers and decimals have a whole number and a fraction, separated by a decimal point. Numbers in Python can be negative, zero and positive. 3. Lists Think about your shopping list. All the items on the list can be stored in a Python list. 4. Dates Python has a special type for working with dates and times. And 5. Booleans A boolean is something that can be true or false. We will see what this means when we want Python to make decisions. We will start with numbers. Let me create a new file called calculate.py. Let's type some code to present numbers on the screen. To present something on the screen, we use the print command, followed by parentheses and a value, in our case 20. I will execute the code. To execute the code, I run the Python command followed by the name of the script. We see the number 20 on the screen. We can also print negative numbers and decimal numbers. I'll execute the code. You have instructed the computer to present numbers. An instruction like this is called a statement. Print 1.5 is a statement. You can compare this to a sentence in spoken languages. You have seen how to print numbers. But the print function can do much more. For example, it can present arithmetic expressions. Arithmetic expressions are calculations like add, subtract, multiply and divide. Let me show you what this looks like in Python. To add numbers, use the plus symbol. Let's execute the code. As you can see, Python added the numbers and printed the result. To subtract numbers, use the minus symbol. To multiply, use the star symbol. And to divide, use the slash symbol. Let's see what happens if we run the code. Look at the last number. As you can see, it is a decimal number. Divisions always result in a decimal number, even if the result has no digits after the point. Let me demonstrate this. I'll execute the code. You might have expected the whole number 2 here, but as I said earlier, Divisions always result in a decimal number. 
You have seen that the print function also accepts arithmetic expressions. Python will evaluate the expression and print the result. Let's start with the first exercise. Create a new file and save that file as calculate.py. Pause the video and resume when you have created the file. Your task is to write seven arithmetic expressions. To get you started, I have written the first print statement for you. It's your task to type the six missing expressions and test if your code works. Pause the video and resume when you're done. And here is the solution. Did you write the same code? Great! Let's move on to the next calculation. Do you remember order of operations from math class? What happens if you want to add and multiply numbers? Just like in math, Python will calculate things in order. First multiply and divide, and then add and subtract. A question. What is the result of this calculation? Python first multiplies 20 by 4 and then adds 10. The result is 90. To change the order, you can use parentheses. Python will now add 10 plus 20 and then multiply by 4. The result is 120. Let me show you this. The result should be 90. Let's check this. That works. Now let's change the order of operations. This time the result should be 120. Notice how the parentheses change the order of operation. If you are writing code along with this video, now is a good time to tell you about code comments. If you want to remember what certain code does, you can create code comments. For example, if you want to remember how parentheses change the order of operation, you can write that in the code. This is what it looks like. Everything that follows the hash character are comments. Comments are meant for humans. They help us to remember what code does. Python will ignore comments. Let me show that by executing the code again. You see, the output does not show the comment. Feel free to put as many comments in the code as you want. Comments start with a hash character and are ignored by Python. I encourage you to write lots of comments during this training. It will help you to remember what you have learned when you look at the code again. Let's exercise order of operations. You are going to buy 4 apples and 2 pears. Your budget is 20 euros. It's your job to calculate the change. In this exercise you will buy 4 apples and 2 pears. Finish the print statement to calculate the change after buying the groceries. Pause the video and resume when you're done. And here is the solution. Don't worry if your code does not look exactly like my solution. In programming, just like in math, there are usually more ways to get to the same result. If the result of your code is 11.5, you have done a good job. Let me also type the solution.
Just as before, I start with the print statement. Then comes the budget. I subtract the price for 4 apples. Plus the price for 2 pears. I always count the parentheses. Notice I have two opening parentheses and only one closing parentheses. So I need to type the closing parentheses. I'll execute the code. Very good. Let's have a look at the code from the last exercise. You see the numbers 20, 4, 1.25 and so on. You probably remember what they mean. Now imagine looking at this code next week. Do you still remember what all the numbers mean? And what if you give this code to someone else? Would they know? Unexplained numbers are called magic numbers and they are a problem. There must be a way to give these values a name. And there is a way. We can do this with variables. And that's all for this chapter. Click on the video to proceed with variables in Python.